what else has my teacher taught me? My teacher taught me that the middle way is the way. What does that mean? It means accept, look, <laughs> accept, forgive, accept, rejoice. So let's read that. Accept, look, accept, forgive, accept, rejoice. Step one, accept that I am as God created me. And again, the I am there is very important to me when I read this. Accept that I am as God created me. The truth is always true. I did not create myself. I am the creative process that is God. So this is accepting that how I experience myself now is not my truth. That the I amness, the isness, that is always my truth. So first is just accepting that, not arguing with that. Then the second step, look at my mind, my experience and the world. Be honest about what I think about focus on and feel. So first I accept that the truth is true. Then with that acceptance in mind I look at what I am thinking and what I am experiencing. And what I'm going to find is that my thoughts and my experience are not <laughs> fully 100% aligned with my truth. I'm going to see a disconnect there. So I want to look at my mind, my experience, and the world. Be honest about what I think about, focus on, and feel. And then, number three, accept. Here we go back into acceptance again. Accept that my experiences and my perception are as they are because of the thoughts and feelings that are believed and focused on within my mind. This is just like the responsibility for sight section that we just read in A Course in Miracles. First, I accept that the truth is true. I am. I am. All right? I am. Then, Look at my experience, my thoughts, how I see the world. And I'm going to notice that I am not always, in fact, I may even be seldom in touch with my I amness. Then I accept that the reason I have an experience other than my I amness is because of the thoughts and feelings that are believed and focused on within my mind. I'm just going to pause for a moment and go right back up and read Responsibility for Sight. Okay, here we go. I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience, and I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for, and I receive as I have asked. That's the same thing as step three here. Accept that my experiences and my perception are as they are because of the thoughts and feelings that are believed and focused on within my mind. Now step four. Forgive the thoughts and feelings and beliefs that I no longer want. This kind of reminds me of the message we just read. Do I want to have a relationship with this grievance? Do I want to have a relationship with this judgment? Do I want to have a relationship with this thought of blame? Right? It's what in, in, in TI Luke 12 we just read as evaluating our thoughts. And as Bill pointed out in our study group today, evaluate has the word value in it. Is this a thought that I truly value from the level of heart? So step four, forgive the thoughts and feelings and beliefs that I no longer want. 
let them go. Just stop believing in them. They are only in my mind because I choose to accept them and hold on to them. Now I choose differently. I can just change my mind. You know, there was a time, I got to tell you, ego was telling me I couldn't do that. This was back, there was another another story that we went over in the last couple of weeks, but this was back when uh, there was that one teacher that I felt had betrayed me. I felt he had betrayed me because I thought he was going to help me and he did not. <laughs> so I thought he had betrayed me. And the idea did cross my mind that I could just let go of that thought. But then there was another thought right on its tail that said, you can't just let go of that thought because it's a fact that he betrayed you. And if you just let go of that thought, you're only lying to yourself. <laughs> it was pretty amazing to me when I finally got it that I could actually just let go of a thought, that these thoughts were not facts. They were just perceptions, just point of views, and in fact, wrong. So again, step four, forgive the thoughts and feelings and beliefs that I no longer want. Let them go. Just stop believing in them. They are only in my mind because I choose to accept them and hold on to them. Now I choose differently. So first, I accept that I am as God created me. I look at my mind and I find the experiences in the world. I accept that those experiences, if they are not mm, truly the perspective of God, Holy Spirit, then there's something that I am making up. And step four, I choose to let them go. I choose not to hold on to the thoughts that I have made up that are different than my truth. And now step five accept my true thoughts and feelings, which are the ones saved for me within the inner chamber of my heart. Hold on to them, turn my focus to them, believe them, allow them into my conscious awareness and my experience of me as me. In other words, I let go of the ego and I embrace the thoughts of the Holy Spirit. I let go of Grievance thoughts, I return my mind to truth. Step six, rejoice. <laughs> Be grateful for the truth. Celebrate the truth, share the truth, and extend the truth. We've all heard that what we are grateful for extends. If we are grateful for our awareness of truth, then our desire for that extends, which means we will get better at noticing false thoughts in our mind. We will get better at not valuing those thoughts and letting them go. We will get better at holding to Holy Spirit's thoughts, seeing with Holy Spirit's vision. So rejoice. Rejoice that the truth is true and that everything that caused conflict within our mind was an error. After that I wrote, My experience is that the middle way is a moment-to-moment -moment process until the mind has finally let go of all false beliefs once and for all. The middle way is both forgiving the faults and accepting wholeheartedly that which is true. It isn't focusing on guilt, as if guilt can save me. <laughs> And it isn't denying the darkness in the mind by hiding in bliss. It is the middle way. It is letting go of guilt and fear and accepting innocence and love and truth simultaneously. It is letting go of guilt and fear and accepting innocence and love and truth simultaneously. And then I wrote, Now that I understand this, I begin the practice of it. It is like learning a whole new language, but I am grateful that I understand who I am, what my purpose is within the world, 
and why I'm asked to practice forgiveness. And my guess on this is that I actually wrote this shortly after um, scribing NTI Ephesians, because really it was in NTI Ephesians that I began to receive the clarity um, of what we are in truth. Until then, they were just words that I read on a page, and, and there might have been some imagined intellectual understanding, <laughs> but there was no what I could call clarity. But after writing NTI Ephesians, I began to have some clarity. And when I began to have some clarity on our truth, and I began to have some clarity on the fact that any experience other than our truth really was something that I was making up, then I also began to have clarity um, on how forgiveness works, on why I really would want to let go of um, ego thoughts. Because as I hold to ego thoughts, I also hold to the misperception of what I am and miss out on the experience of our truth. Um, so that's it for that particular blog post. It looks like we have a...